Hi everyone, this is Tanya from MontrealMom.com, live in my kitchen today, and I am accompanied by mompreneurs Tammy and Bunny of Snap Cakes. I'm sorry that we're starting about 10 minutes uh, late. I was running around trying to make sure I had everything on the table. So um, what we're going to be doing today is introducing a brand new company, Snap Cakes, to the world. I'm super excited about this, and there's a story that goes along, but as I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the story. What Snap Cakes is, is basically everything to make those awesome cakes that you see, that you see on Facebook, everybody sharing, that people pay $250, $350 plus, plus, plus in a, like those beautiful designer cakes. A cake that you could buy everything to make a cake just like that in one kit, one box. All you do is supply the cake and the icing and a little wee bit of cornstarch and your love and your fun and you can make a cake like that and really anyone can do it. So um, Bunny or Tammy, could somebody please bring me a cake or the cakes to start? And I'm gonna start to show you what's in the kit. So in the kit, you get different cake boards. So you could make, um, you're gonna be making two cakes. I actually tried this with Duncan Hines and it works. You could make your own favorite family recipe. Um, you could use your own icing. You could use the Duncan Hines recipe. Uh, Duncan Hines uh, icing, I did both. Thank you very much, Benny. And so my cake is pre-iced so I can just show you how we're going to use the kit. So here's what's in the kit. The cake boards, if you're doing a nine inch layer and an eight inch layer, you would use these cake boards. If you're using eight inch and six inch, these two. It comes with a fondant smoother. You're gonna freak out about the fondant. That's, that's the coolest part of everything. Decorations, which we're going to get to, to make a beautiful, beautiful cake. Oh, bling, lots of bling, and ribbon, which is going to go around the cake, and fondant. There is a an icing bag if you want to pipe. That's optional. And then there's also lots of like sprinkles, and these are called bagage. So, and this is, you supply your own icing and your cake, but this is already pre-iced, but we'll use this for piping later. This is the coolest part of a snap cakes, a snap cakes kit, the fondant. So if you've worked with fondant before, you might love it or you might hate it, or it might be a love-hate relationship. So that would be <laughs> because it's not always so easy to use. Well, snap cakes has it ready for you literally in a snap. I'm gonna put this on the side here. You just trim the package and you unroll it. Look how beautiful this is. You're going to do this carefully because you don't want to rip it. But you don't need to be a pro to do this. You just need to be a little bit slow and careful. You guys know I don't do slow so well, but this I do slow. So how cool is that? It's already in a disc, a circle, ready to be, as I call it, plunked on the cake. So we're going to bring this over here. Maybe I should work on my parchment paper. That would probably be best. Here. Sorry. Beautifully iced cake. Thank you, Bunny, for doing that for me. And always good to have a damp towel close by. So before we plunk the fondant onto the cake, we're going to give it a gentle roll. You don't need a roller because it comes, the roller actually is inside the fondant. It's part of like what holds its shape. So just give it a couple of rolls. I made one earlier today. I just rolled it like three, four times, right? Like I don't need to do more than that. Okay. I was testing it out on Duncan Hines for you guys because I wanted to be able to tell you it could for sure, for sure be done with Duncan Hines and I can verify that it can. Now you're going to carefully put it on. Now I happen to get it pretty centered this time, but sometimes you don't and I have done it where I didn't and you just lift it up again and would reposition it if that's what you needed to do. So I'm gonna lift it up. I think it's pretty centered. And you just gently peel back the plastic. Step one. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna take my ring off for this because that's probably, this ring I never take off. So I'm gonna like gently, gently get the fondant to adhere to the cake. And this is an important part. You wanna sort of get the fondant to hug the cake. And you're just gonna do it, you don't wanna pull downwards because you don't wanna rip the fondant. If you look at Instagram and you see people having trouble with their cakes, it's often because they rip the fondant. So you wanna sort of like just gently hug it to the cake. It's gonna feel a little awkward, like there are air bubbles in it. That's okay, just be a little patient. I'm gonna be doing this on Facebook Live. You see how quick it is to do it. What's good about the parchment is you can actually like twist it around on your table or your counter. 
So I'm just doing this gently and you can kind of like smooth it like this. Bunny, feel free to correct me if I'm doing something wrong here. If it's sticky, you have some corn starch on your head. It's not sticky yet, so I'm thinking it's okay, right? Yep. Okay, but if it were, you would just have some corn starch like this. You really don't need this much. I'm very <laughs> generous with corn starch. You just put a little bit on your hands and make sure. Um, or you could have it even like a little shaker bottle if this is something you want to do often. So I'm just going to be a little slow about this. Kind of looks like a table at a wedding, don't you find? That's what I find. Okay. So a bit about the story of snap cakes is Bunny, um, you may have seen her beautiful cakes on Facebook. She's Bunny Bakes. If you haven't, you can check her out. She makes spectacular stuff, like really like Ace of Cakes level, you know? And she's the baking sister. Tammy is the sister who burns coffee, according to her. <laughs> so they were on a little road trip one day, going to Plattsburgh, so I think this is enough. So I just, I'm gonna continue with the story in a second. So look, it's like about, I'd say like about two inches, is only an inch? An inch and an inch and a half. An inch and an inch and a half. You wanna make sure that it's like well adhered. Okay, so it's if pretty. If you go further, it doesn't really matter. If you go further, it doesn't matter. You just don't wanna go higher because the next part where we're gonna try to like adhere the whole like skirt, what I call the skirts to the cake, the ruffles to the cake, you don't want to, if, if you do it without like getting this to adhere first, it's gonna, it's gonna rip. So that's, that's about as difficult as it gets in this whole process, <laughs> okay? Which is really not so difficult. Um, so now you have a choice. You can use your hand to just sort of bring the fondant close to the cake. You might end up with a little a little crease, which you're actually going to cover up later, so it doesn't matter. But if you want to be perfectionist about it, so I'm going to be perfectionist about it. So you can use your hand, or you can use a fondant smoother. I'll be honest, I prefer using my hand, but I'll show you how the fondant smoother works. So you're going to sort of like make your ruffle a little wider. Again, Bunny, if I'm doing this wrong, correct me. But it's working for you. It's working for me. And that's the whole idea is it'll work for you at home too. It's like so easy. I did this with my youngest daughter. She had a blast. And that was even before her 12th birthday. So here you go. So here is with the smoother. And then see here, it's going to like make a big wrinkle. It's obvious. So you just like sort of tuck it out and smooth. And I guess you can do it this way. That's probably really the right way to do it. But. Anyhow, so Tammy and Bunny were on a road trip in the car and Bunny had some work to do designing one of her cakes. So she was sketching in the car. Tammy was driving and she looked over her shoulder and saw what her sister was doing in sketching this beautiful design. And she said, it's really not fair. It's not fair that you can make that and I can. I should be able to make that too. And then Bunny said, are you kidding me? Do you know how much I invested in courses and equipment and all kinds of like lessons and probably conferences, I'm guessing, but I don't know, I might be adding that in. But like, it's a lot of education and it's a lot of equipment and learning and time. It just, it can't be done. And Tammy, I know Tammy for a long time, doesn't like to be told that things can't be done. <laughs> so she said, okay, hold on, I'm gonna interrupt myself, keeping you on a cliffhanger here. So I think this is good to go. Would you agree? Yes. Okay, I'm talking too much, really. Okay, so then you take a pizza cutter or a sharp knife. I like the pizza cutter route. And you just cut. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it from all sides. If you're leaning too hard on the cake, yeah. Yeah, I know, I'm, I, I, I'm pressing it at the same time, but you're right, I should not be leaning on the cake. We're gonna have like a hole in the cake. Okay, we're gonna have a donut cake, sorry. But see how forgiving it is? I just stopped leaning on it. It's just fine. Okay, so um, so Bunny doesn't like to be told things cannot be done. I'm uh, not Bunny, Tammy. Well, maybe Bunny doesn't like being told that either, but in this case, it was Tammy. And Tammy said, no, that just means it hasn't been done yet. She started doing all kinds of research. Okay, so we've encountered what some of you may encounter as a problem in making your cakes. A slight fondant tear. This one is barely visible. Now, I can just warm it up a little bit. Hold on. Now my hands are sticky. I'm going to cornstarch them. It's really barely visible. And I can like sort of pull it together, but not violently. I'm going to just make it warm and it slowly will come together. I probably could patch it, but I think it's gonna be uglier. You barely see it, especially since we're all white here. 
Okay, see this is just to show you that as human beings we make mistakes and our cakes still come out beautifully. Bunny, am I doing okay here? Mm -hmm. I usually right. tell, say, try to remember where the, where the mistake was. Or and, well, we can tip. stick and like a bling. Well, well, yeah, well, I barely see it. So we can also put some bling here or something later yeah. to cover that up if we want cake. to. Sorry? Or that's the, the back, back of your cake. cake. That's the back of the cake. Yeah. Excellent. That's yeah. the back of the cake. Anyhow, so Tammy started to do some research. Uh, should we start with the next cake at this point? Sure. Um, Tammy did some research and she started sourcing things and finding out what could be done and what could be put into a kit and what might work. And she put this incredible kit together. And uh, she did a lot of research and a lot of focus groups and listening to a lot of people who tried making these cakes and kept perfecting it and perfecting and perfecting it until we have what we have today, which is snap cakes. So now that I'm done yapping, I'm going to move this cake to the side a bit and I'm going to work a little bit more quickly so that you can start to see the bling and the decorating. By the way, because I'm working, if any of you are commenting while I'm on Facebook Live, I am not seeing your comments, but I will answer them later. So there's some exciting news about Snap Cakes and the launch. Can I share that now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, well, you know how I feel about mom, like mompreneurship in general and mom starting their own business. I'm a huge fan and a huge supporter. So besides this being exciting because these are two Montreal moms who've started their own business, by the way, as I'm talking, you'll see I'm just repeating the exact same thing I did before, but for the smaller cake. Um, they are going to, it's besides being exciting because it's a new business, it's, uh, it's actually launching in the month of October. So this is the first time that we're really going big public, like to start to tell people about this product. And there's going to be a launch party on October 18th. And uh, we're gonna have all the details out on Montreal Mom, hopefully tomorrow, worst case over the weekend. And uh, be sure to come back to Montreal Mom. And what I will do is once we have um, the blog post up with all of the information and the invitation, you can RSVP through Eventbrite. Um, it's not really a cost of a ticket, it's a donation which is going straight to Just For Kids Foundation. Snap Cakes is keeping none of it. So it's not like all profits go, it's all proceeds go. They just wanna make a party and it was a great way to support Just For Kids at the same time, why not? Double, you know, double whammy in a good way. And so that's how it's going to happen. And it's going to be a fun evening with prizes and raffle and lots of food and cocktails. It's gonna be cocktail dinner toi style, which is lots of fun. A great girls night out, a great mummy's night out. And uh, all the details will be on the blog. I just wrecked this beautiful icing, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna be covered with fondant. And um, once the details are all up on the blog, I'm gonna post a link in the comments of this Facebook Live video. Okay, here we go. I, you know what? I think maybe I should move this cake to the side. Uh, yeah, that will be better. All right. It's very real here, folks. You could see. If it were too perfect, you'd think you can't do it. But as you can see, you really can. Okay. Now we're going to do that same step of kind of hugging the tablecloth of fondant to the cake. See, I'm working a little more quickly now because I'm talking less. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to ask the question. You guys can, if whoever's watching can answer in the comments, I'd be curious to hear from you, but I'll only see your answers later, is how many of you have like forked over two, three, four hundred dollars for a cake or pitched in for a cake for like a big family anniversary or a special milestone birthday? Um, and the cakes are beautiful. We're not going to take away anything from all the cake artists, but... How many of you secretly would love to be able to take pride and make a cake like this for, you know, your parents' 50th anniversary or um, a special family occasion or even for a kid's birthday party? Um, I think a lot of us would love to be able to do that, but it's daunting. Have you ever gone to the store and tried to buy all of these components? I have. Those of you who saw my Rice Krispies segment last year on BT, oh my goodness, the supplies not cheap <laughs> so anyway so whenever i buy fondant and supplies like that i mean it's fun to shop for them but it's also time consuming and by the way when you're doing that for a special event you usually have a lot of other things going on besides the making of the cake for a special event and you know what happens we're moms right so we do everything when late at night 
And then you realize, oh my gosh, I forgot that component, but the store's closed. So now you have to wait till the next morning and you're all stressed out about getting that component. It could be a piping tube or like a little, a little, uh, what do you call this again? A piping head? I don't know. Yeah. I know what it's called. I have tons of them. I just didn't remember. I had a mental block. You, you have, oh, you wanted that special rosette tip, but you didn't get it from the store. So you know what? All of this is in a cake. You have to remember nothing. You remember the cake, the icing, and some cornstarch. That's all you need. Maybe parchment paper. So that's also a really attractive option, and it's something that you can be doing at night. Another thing is that, I mean, maybe on a rainy day during winter break or spring break, you want to be doing a little activity with your kids, and there's an occasion coming up. So you get yourself a snap cakes kit and you have your kids help you mixing the cake and everything and they can even help with making a snap cakes. Not even kidding you. The kids can, you notice I smoothed all of this with my hands by the way. I'm much more comfortable with that than the smoother but if you're more comfortable with the fondant smoother you can use that. And here we're trimming and you can remove this. Now by the way you can give this to your kids to play with and make things. They can love it. So yeah, so you're, you can have your kids help you make a cake and that could be like a whole day, at, well, it actually wouldn't be a whole day activity. It doesn't take that long, but it could be something that you guys do together in, on an afternoon. So now we're gonna take this cake. I have not even opened the instruction booklet. This is terrible. I should show you that there is a step-by-step -step instruction booklet, which is fantastic. So down to if you're making your own cake, which you usually are, how you can level it off. Super easy with a sharp knife. I did it this morning. What you need how to set up, and let's get caught up in the book. So, we have placed our fondant, and the next part, I believe, is we're gonna put like supports into the cake, which are dowels. So, here is a ruler, and these are, but these instructions are great, and by the way, I know personally have been reviewed over and over and over by so many people to make sure that they're okay. So now we're gonna go back to our original cake, the base, the bottom layer, sorry, and we are going to measure. And you want it to come up just so, basically the height of the cake. And I'm gonna snip it right about there. And then you're gonna do two more just like it and make sure that they're all even. And this is gonna ensure that the top layer is supported and doesn't like cave in. Now that's pretty even, it is even. And I wanna mention, I showed you the cake, um, the cake boards, but you should know that each of these cakes is already on a cake board. I'm gonna very carefully show you, it's already on a cake board. So that, these basically supports are gonna go into the cake and they're gonna support the cake. Now, where do you put them? I don't know if you can see on the instruction booklet, you're just gonna put them sort of like, I'm gonna call it a bowling ball triangle right in the middle. I'm doing this right, right, Bunny yeah. and Tammy? Oh, it's a little bit high. Yank it out and shorten it. I'll yank it out and shorten it. This could happen at home, and guess what? It doesn't matter. Just be gentle. Ah! Can you get it out? Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah, just take it out. There that we go. Tall. We'll make it a little bit shorter. You make it too tall, you make it too short, it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly, but now I'm gonna cut the other ones at the same time to level them off. To even them out, I mean, because you want them to all be the same height. Okay, <laughs> I'm flying on my kitchen floor. Okay, so like so, just in a triangle formation. And that will help to support the cake board, which is supporting the upper layer. I want to wet my hands because they're a little sticky now. Always good to have a wet cloth. I also want to mention, you might have noticed I asked Bunny and Tammy to bring me the cakes. Look at that. How awesome is that? It's not even decorated yet. How incredible is that? Just make it perfect. Here. Now, I don't even remember what I said was the back of the cake. This is the back of my cake. I'm turning this around. Okay. I'm going to bring it to the center of the parchment. And now if it was going to go on a cake board, it would go now because otherwise it gets Yeah, so right. we could transfer this to like a serving platter or whatever right now, but we don't need to do that for the purposes of this demo. And um, I was saying something before, but I don't remember what it was, but that's okay. So the next thing is, I'm going to follow the instructions, um, the ribbon. So you've got this beautiful 
happy birthday ribbon. And you just put it on and you can bring it around the back and then you can glue it together with piping icing, is this what? Yeah. Piping gel, piping gel, see? You see how expert I am because I don't know all of these terms. But it doesn't matter because the whole idea is you don't need to be an expert. Okay, now um, I don't remember if you put it all the way around or just at the edge, right? Like just the to edge. glue it at just the edge. edge. That's yeah. what I remember from last time. Okay, so just put a little bit at the edge. I probably should be showing you what I'm doing. That would be better. So do you put it at the edge of both bunny or you put it like, cause like, should I glue it here underneath and where it joins yeah, or? Yeah, onto the cake and then on top of the ribbon. So yeah. Okay, so it's like this, I'm kind of like moving this. Yeah. And the reason I'm doing that is cause I want my seam to be really you can trim it in the back it. here. And this is fully edible stuff guys. So you're not worried. It like, you know, just piping gel, you th I think about it as the glue, but it's perfectly fine. Yeah, I can, I can trim it a little actually. Mm -hmm. I could use a little trim, so. Okay, so let me show you. I've trimmed it there. And now I'm just gonna close it off. And it just works like a little glue here. Okay, so that is that. And next, after this, we are gonna put on what you call the edible images. Oh, where are my edible images? Are they in here? Yes, they are. So this is like a really fun, girly, like fun, I call it like a girl's night out cake, but. Anyway, you'll see it, and I love it because it's got zebra and hot pink, and I happen to love that combination. Okay, hold on. I need a really cool high heel shoe. Okay, so now this, remind me. So here, using the enclosed brush, apply a thin layer of piping gel around the base. So I'm going to do that right now. trying to keep you entertained with my talking and also with my doing at the same time. I hope I am not boring anyone. Here we go. I guess I can start putting the first layer on. And this you just peel right off, like super easy, but don't be too wild, even though it's zebra, because um, you want it not to rip. It's super delicate. And here you go. But it's edible. But it's edible. Yeah. I've used these edible images. I might have even shared on my child mom. Like you can like get them printed. Like, but this happens to come in the kit, so you don't have to run to the specialty store and send them the image on a JPEG and get it printed. It's all part of the kit. That is the beauty of snap cakes. Everything can be done in a snap. Like, would you actually think that you could sit and watch me on Facebook Live put together this cake? Okay, and I have no special training other than having practiced on snap cakes before because I wanted to make sure I believed in the product before I put my name behind it. Okay. Oh, let me turn this around so you can see what I'm doing again. I'm, I, you know what happens is I get so into it that I forget that I'm actually speaking to you and I'm just like doing my thing. So I can go right here at the seam. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Pretty darn close. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of is, huh? I didn't even look. <laughs> it kind of is. All right, so. Now, I didn't put piping gel all on the whole thing, just on the bottom, and it's adhering to the cake just beautifully, and that's fine, right? Yeah. Okay, so that is done, and we have an extra edible image. That I mean, if you wanted to do something on your own and go wild and like cut something out, you could, but you don't need to. I love the template and the design that comes with the kit. So this is done. And next, we are going to put on what they call decos and some bling, and we can also do some piping. So, should we do decos first? What do you guys yeah. recommend, you ladies? Yeah. Decos? Okay. Fine. Decoration. Sorry. Yeah. Tammy calls them decos. Oh, look. I've got a piece of dowel in here. So, now these also, we use the piping gel. And it's like our edible. little glue. Okay. I want to make sure. So, I'm going to keep it in mind. This is the back of my cake. What do I want to put in the front? I kind of like the lipstick. And like, here's where you really get to be a little more creative and put your own little spin on it because you can, you know, you can put like more of these, less of these. It's as you wish. You can have them going straight. You can have them going crooked. It's whatever your heart desires. I do a little bit of both. Gotta love the little cell phone. 
here. And all edible, huh? Yes, all edible. Except for the, the ribbon. Do not try to eat the ribbon. Okay, that, that I will say. Okay. High heel shoe here. And we're going to keep going. And then I'm going to show you the bling soon. Here, I'll turn this around once again so you can see what I'm doing. I didn't do a very good turning around job, did I? Okay. And I'll do a cell phone here. Now there are extras and we could add them. You can go as like as light or as not light. You know what, I don't wanna put another one there. I'm gonna put another lipstick. It's narrower and it's got a cell phone really close by there. So I'm gonna change my mind and put a lipstick. Okay, now, I'll put this right back into my piping glue. I need to wash my hands. Um, we can put on some of the bling. So this is what I call the bling. It's like rhinestone kind of fun stuff. And it's been pre-cut for me. It actually comes in this like big roll. So uh, Tammy took the liberty of pre-cutting it for me so that it wouldn't be too like big and fall on the floor while I was doing the demo. So here, where's the back of our cake? So we're gonna do this again. So we bring it to the back. And again, with a little bit of piping gel. And then you can trim it too. Well. Yeah, which I am going to do. Can make it just so. You can have it overlap a bit if you want. I prefer not to have it overlap too much, maybe by just one. Let's see what happens if I do it. You know what, I'm gonna make it not overlap at all. I like it better. And it has a little bit of stretch, by the way. So it's like, again, very forgiving, forgiving. It's like a very beautifully designed kit because I like that it's forgiving because the whole thing is we're not perfect, but we wanna make a perfect looking cake. So now we're here and we're getting to the part where we can put some sparkles and things on top. Should I put the topper in it, you think? Yeah. I think so. Okay, so there are different things you can do, by the way. You can put the topper all the way on top. You can put it down here. Where should I put it? What are you guys saying? Top. top. Okay, topper on top. So right here. And the show, I love the show. How's that? We still see the happy birthday? Yeah. All right. And there's something else you can do. There's, these are called dragé and you can put them, you could not put them, but Bunny actually taught me a trick. If you want to like put them, like let's say as a little accent, you can like put it in. You would put a little glue though, right? Like a little yeah. uh, gel. And you probably don't even have to, but what do you think? Better to put some? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. I don't have to do all of them, but you can use the, you know, use your paintbrush as a little tool and it makes a little hole for it. And you can still do it without. And I'm not gonna make you sit through while I do all of them, but I'll put the ones on the front. Ellie, ah, see, I forgot I'm here. Uh-oh. And you know what happens? Nothing, it just glued it back. I probably didn't press it in enough. There we go. Okay. And then the finishing touch, some fairy dust. <laughs> Just sprinkle it like so, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you tap it in or you don't really no, need to? No. You don't Just need to, right? Eh? Okay. And then you can put the rest into the piping after if you choose to. Oh, I forgot about the piping. I yeah. forgot about the piping. A nice finishing layer and I like putting them into the piping. Okay, so here's something you can do and this is probably something many of you have done before. Piping bag. See, normally I have to use a Ziploc because Snap Cakes doesn't provide me with a piping bag when I'm doing my own stuff. But if you're buying Snap Cakes or you have a Snap Cakes kit, it comes with the piping bag. You're going to take your tip, put it right in. Ah, the right way, though, please, Tanya. And you're going to fill up the icing. Sorry about this, I should have opened it earlier. Take your spoon, put in some icing. This is a good trick that I learned from the sister team of Tammy and Bunny, but truthfully I learned it from Bunny because she's the expert. Sorry, Tammy, That's okay. it is the truth. Okay, and then if you really want to fill it up, you can put it into a cup and then put more, but I probably will not need this much. It depends on the cake design you're doing. Oh, did I not mention that there are all these awesome different designs? 
I should probably mention that now. So you can do, there's a unicorn cake and that's what's making me think about it because the unicorn cake has like, you can make kind of like a unicorn mane and that you would probably use a little bit more icing than for maybe the cake that I'm doing right now. So you're gonna push it down and see my tip just came right out. Super easy, I just trimmed off the tip. And most of us can do little stars. And that's what I'm gonna do to finish it up. Except I'm saying finish it up, but I'm also going to put a little bit of the fairy dust glitter into here because I think it looks really pretty and glitzy. So again, I'm asking you guys how many of you have spent a lot of money on a cake and I'm sure you loved it, but I'm sure you didn't love paying for it. How many of you would love to know that you had made the special occasion cake for your loved one and feel that satisfaction of doing it. It's also like a bit of a creative process going on here, but it's a creative process for people who maybe also don't want to think about it too much. You want to think about it more, you're going to get a little bit more artsy and creative, or if you want to just follow the exact template, you can do that as well. So I want to know who would love that feeling of doing it. And I want to remind you all to check out montrealmom.com in the next couple of days to find out all about the launch event. It is going to be spectacular and a really fun night out and I'm gonna be there emceeing. So I'll be very happy to chat with you all when I'm there and eat with you all. I will not say drink with you all because those of you who know me know that I really don't drink very much, um, if at all. Here we go, look at the glitter and just go to town. Do it how you wanna do it. You can even, if you wanted to, pop in a dragée or two into there. You know, just something fun. Is it still taping? Okay, <laughs> sorry guys, we had a mild interruption and I did put it on Do Not Disturb. All right, and there you have it. I'm taking a bath. <laughs> Hi, I've snap caked. <laughs> okay. Check it out, I'm going to embed this video into the blog, you'll find it on my YouTube channel. Please hold the date, October 18th at night. Join us for the Snap Cakes launch. I can't wait to see you there, and I can't wait for you all to try Snap Cakes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section, and I will be sure to answer. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Wow, you're really good at that.